Hello everyone, and welcome back to the second half of the Warrior Quest. Last time we did the Marauder's Guild, and today we're going to cover the Warrior part. Who would have thought? <laughs> so let's get started, shall we? The Axe Master tells us he is such a good axe wielder that he can fight with the best of them, and any enemy who could fluster him and his men is not one to be trifled with. We are to meet up with Sokweb when we arrive there, and she'll brief us on the situation at hand. When we meet up with her in the Costa del Sol, she says that we are a sight for sore eyes, as a nasty group of turtles has been preying on the areas of late. Even Master Gijiru finds themselves no match for the turtles. We follow Sokfweb to the northern shore, where we find a man with an axe and glowing eyes, almost beast-like in nature, attacking the turtles. We charge in to help with the turtles, but quickly become outnumbered by how many of them there are. The man with the axe jumps in and keeps cutting the turtles down. He tells us to stand back as we'll end up their next meal. So Fueb recognizes the axe, but doesn't say much as we charge back in to take the turtles on again. After slaying enough, the man feels that it should send them back to their nest for the time being. He tells us his name is Curious Gorge, and one remark about his name and he'll rip our heads from our shoulders. He asks if we are guards from Costa del Sol, and Sokfweb tells him that we are the Marauders Guild and were sent by the Axe Master to assist in the defense before introducing herself and then us. Upon hearing we're from the Guild, he tells us if he had known, he would have introduced himself with proper respect. He tells us he sees a strength in us not found in ordinary men before inviting us to become a warrior with him. Sokfweb comments that she thought warrior techniques had been lost in time. Curious Gorge says that in these parts it may be dead, but his tribe has been handing them down for thousands of years. Sadly, their numbers dwindle every year, and he's left the mountain to come here. He once again asks us if we would like to join, and if we decide to, to meet him at the Hidden Falls. Sokweb tells us that in the company of heroes, there was once a warrior, but when the company disbanded, he was never to be seen again, and maybe it was Curious Gorge. She tells us this is an opportunity of a lifetime, and if she was us, she would head off to the Hidden Falls without delay. Upon arriving at the falls, Gorge tells us he knew we would come. Any man can take up an axe and call himself a marauder, but to become a warrior, he must prove he can tame the inner beast that guides the blade. I witnessed your battle with the turtles, and I must say that I was impressed. You have proven yourself far more worthy of this than I could have imagined. He also says in our hands lies the soul of a warrior, a crystal within which the deeds of a thousand warriors from history are recorded. The soul has been passed down in his tribe, who choose the path of the warrior in order to guide them. Today we celebrate, for he has ensured that his tribe's legacy will endure. 
Gorge tells us he fears his mission will end in failure, for he has left the mountain before his training was complete. While he holds the text of his ancestors, he cannot decipher them. But there is one other who can. He also fled the village, his brother. Without him, there is little he can teach us at this time, but it will not discourage him from continuing his studies of the Chronicles. Until then, we must use the knowledge passed down to us and continue our training. He wishes us luck for now. He tells us that deciphering the ancient chronicles of his people is proving to be much more demanding and of a task than he had imagined. He tells us he's also been busy helping a comrade from his days of being in the company of the heroes that has taken him back and forth across the realm. Apparently a feral beast has been terrorizing people and no one knows where it's come from just that it thirsts for blood unlike anything they've ever seen. Because he spent a lot of time hunting the beast, it has taken away from him making any progress in studying the Chronicles, and thus he's made very little progress. He was, however, able to decipher one passage that may be of interest to us. From what he can tell, the Chronicles tell of an ancient set of armor forged by his ancestors in the flames of the seven hells and is inscribed with the same arcane incantations that make it irresistible to the soul of a warrior. This armor was passed down from a hero to apprentice for centuries until one man who was driven by rage and excessive pride in himself cast all five pieces from Albathia's highest peak since that day, the armor has remained lost, including the power it harbors. As far as Gorge can make out, the next passage in the Chronicles concerns that whereabouts of the missing artifacts. So far, however, he's only been able to make sense of one word, but he confesses that he has some excitement and imagines that a warrior clad in such garbs could achieve high levels. He comments, Ah, uh, if only my brother was here. We could decipher the text together and spread the teachings of our people to the entire realm. Alas, he is not. His whereabouts are hidden to me, as those of the ancient armor. I would have liked for you to meet him, if only that you could have looked upon a true warrior. Well, perhaps you still shall. Eorzea is not as large as most people perceive. Paths crossed. Fates intertwine. Such is the will of the spinner. It may be that my brother has chosen a similar path to mine, but I have been rambling long enough. He tells us of a giant sandworm in the southern reaches of Thanalan in the Sigoli Desert. He wishes for us to fight this creature in order to realize that the feeble hacks and slash of our axe are ill-suited to the task of cutting down such foe, but we should not be dissuaded. If we wake the slumbering beast within and summon it forth, a strength that goes beyond the limits of our physical form shall be achieved. However, first we have to find the beast, and that might prove more difficult in itself. The Yu tribe, the inhabitants of the Forgotten Springs, are the ones who can send us in the right direction. Heading to southern Thanalan, we speak with Ukahaba Tia, who tells us that sandworms leave tracks and are best bet is to find the tracks and proceed to make much noise as possible for they are sensitive to vibrations but we could also seek a cure for our madness for wanting to face one when speaking with utawali she tells us that the beast tribe is three moms high it showed up in our hunting field some years ago and has been eating her prey ever since ugoro muli says that he saw Leviathan of the Dunes preying on the group of merchants south from Bregat Strike. We head out to the area where the sandworm was last spotted. When getting close to the damaged wares of the merchants, we find the giant sandworm, and by unlocking the beast within, we manage to slay the giant worm. We return to Curious Gorge, 
who says he can tell our soul grows ever stronger by cutting down the sandworm. The beast within slowly but surely is awakened. He tells us that when next we battle, we may find movements that we could not do before, and we have mastered the new talents to return to him. In the meantime, he shall continue to study the ancient text. At level 40, we return to Curious Gorge, who greets us saying that it is quite obvious we've been anything but idle in our training since we last met. He tells us our progress is heartening, and to look upon it also serves as a reminder that each hour he spends poring over the ancient text is an hour not spent honing his skills, causing him to fear his worth with one on the battlefield is disheartening each day. However, he is certain his studies of the ancient texts will be useful, and he has in fact discovered how the warriors of his tribe came to be shunned by the outside world. The city-states attempted to implement the teachings of the warrior tribe in their training halls, learning how to summon the inner beasts. Sadly, the consequences were dire, as the soldiers became unstoppable and uncontrollable. Both friend and foe were slayed in the carnage, as they could not tell one another apart. Afterwards, the three city-states blamed this on his people before banning the ancient art and imprisoning anyone suspected of teaching it. At least, that is what the text says. This surprises Gorge. For all his training, his brother never once told him of their people's dark past. In fact, he himself has not witnessed any one of his tribes succumb to the rage that is described in the Chronicles. He wonders if this is just lies meant to stop his people from becoming warriors themselves. He tells us that his tribe's art has faded into obscurity and the damage has already been done. However, he will not turn a blind eye to this injustice, and if none of his people will change his reputation, then he will. He calms himself and tells us that he got caught up in the history and forgot about the present. He reminds us of his former comrade in the Company of Heroes, and the great woolly beast we have been pursuing, for it still plagues the people of Wineport. He hopes in defeating the beast, people will recognize that warriors are no longer fearsome beasts, but valuable allies. With help, we can win back our proud name and meet up with him at Wineport. Once at Wineport, we meet up with the military captain. He tells us they are very happy for us to aid them, as the fiends come relentlessly and few able bodies they have are outmatched. The western gates have been besieged and are currently left without any man defenses. Gorge tells us to go defend the east, and together we'll form a bulwark that not a single fiend can penetrate. Once the enemies have fallen back, we are to return here to find the captain. Heading to the east, we push the enemies back quickly and go to meet up with everyone. When talking with the captain, he tells us that though Gorge fought like a man possessed, it was still hard to mistake him for the very beast he is hunting, and maybe the child has been hearing too many ghost stories from her parents. 
He tells us not to worry, for he will speak to the villagers and clear up the misunderstanding. He asks us to return to Gorge in the falls and let him know that Winepart is indebted to him for his aid. Gorge tells us he was unprepared for the girl's reaction. He now realizes that while him and I know he's in control, most others think he is not. He wonders if this is not the cause to his tribe's disgrace, and if that may be the case, then perhaps he should return to the Chronicles once more. He tells us that our soul crystal sparkles and wonders if the soul of the warrior revealed anything or if we heard any whispers. He sighs and comments, if only they hadn't betrayed me as my brother did. Before telling us to continue our training, he will continue his studies. At level 45, we return to Gorge, and he tells us that he has exciting news. I have finally uncovered the clues pertaining to the whereabouts of the lost armor of my ancestors. As it turns out, after the fallen hero cast the five pieces into the mountains, five of his pupils set out to recover them, intending to restore their master's name. What is more, they were actually successful in the search. However, when it came to returning the set, the Marmor's great power began to work upon their minds, and not one could bring himself to relinquish his peace. Realizing then that their master's fatal pride was born of the artifact's combined influence, the pupils resolved to keep the pieces separate and to share between five the power might otherwise could have consumed one. Thus did each of them carve his own piece in history. He says that the Chronicles go on to say that later, prior to death, each of the pupils returned to the scene of their greatest victory and buried the artifact in a final attempt to prevent one warrior from holding the set. And it is there the pieces still rest. The armor Gorge wears is a replica set crafted by his ancestors, which is identical to only lack of arcane enchantments that the original possessed. Gorge wants us to bring the five pieces together once more. He thinks the way to stop us from being corrupted is to trace the runes we find in the armor into every piece of warrior gear. He deems his plan quite brilliant and wants us to split up and begin the search straight away. He has figured out three locations and is sending us off to get them. One is buried in Boulder Downs in Coerthus. One is in Camp Tranquil in South Shroud, and the last one rests in Parada's Peace in the Western Thanalan. When we return to Gorge, he asks how our search went and if we have the armor we should put them on to show him. After putting on the armor, we stand before Gorge, who tells us that at first glance he could not tell we had on the armor because it is so fitting for us, as well as sensing the runes on each piece of armor resonating with our soul crystal. He has no doubt that these are the pieces of the warrior armor. He too has found a piece of the armor, but unlike us, he felt nothing, and the piece felt no different than his replica he already owned. He tells us he has tracked down another piece before this problem occurred. He wants us to go retrieve it from Red Mantis Falls here in eastern Lenosia. When we return to Gorge, he tells us he may have discovered why his piece was devoid of power. He tells us that in order for the armor to connect with someone, their soul crystal must shine brightly. But since the event in Wineport, it has been a lifeless husk. In the text it says, if the warrior's soul crystal is weak, the armor will consume him and turn him into a raging beast. And Gorge thinks the armor sensed his weakened state and foresaw the potential danger, thus not reacting to save him. He tells us he is worried for us even though our soul burns stronger because of the fate that we have given ourselves by putting on the armor. He tells us to come back once we feel ready when looking inside of ourselves. After some time we return to Gorge and he asks us if we truly want to seek the ultimate relic of his people even though the armor could consume our soul. 
If we are convinced, he will not be the one to stand in our way. He only asks that if we feel the beast consuming us, that we cast the armor aside. For once the beast consumes our soul, there is no turning back. We will be destined to leave not but carnage in our way as the monster rages on. He says his people have been shunned long enough, and it's time for the warriors to protect the weak and be loved and admired by the people of the realm. All the time he spent studying the ancient texts have been for this day. Brother, I know not where your fate has led you, and yet I feel certain that, in spirit, you stand with me today. Together we will restore the honor of our people. He apologizes for the sentimental moment, as this has been a long time coming. The breastplate we seek can be found in the highlands of Coorthus, at a spring known as Weeping Saint. He tells us he will stay behind, as the events at Wineport still weigh heavily in his mind. When we reach the Weeping Saint, we engage the beast of the cave, Voltthorn. After slaying him, we obtain the chest piece, but Gorge approaches us and tells us to hand him the breastplate, as he simply cannot trust the relic to an outsider who could become overwhelmed by its power. He says he is returning to the Hidden Falls, and if we would like words with him, to ask him out there, as he will not run away. When we return to the falls, he says he is sorry and did not mean for things to go this way but he has had no choice. He explains that he cannot allow us to put on the plate when he can't even trust himself with the power and swears to us that no one will put on the plate until he has proof that there is a will strong enough to resist the temptation of the beast within. He tells us he will return the tome if there are answers that lie within the pages. He then sends us off to train more. At level 50, we return to Gorge, who tells us we have much to discuss, but now is not the time for the bloodthirsty beast Gorge has been hunting is attacking Wineport again. Apparently, those who managed to escape the carnage reported that the creature looked more man than beast. If this is true, everyone is in far more danger than previously thought, and we must find a way to stop. He must find a way... This is his chance to prove to everyone how wrongly judged his tribe was. He hopes that his ancestors will deem him worthy, and even his brother too. He tells us there is no time to lose, and we should leave at once. Upon arriving in Windport, we talk with the captain who thanks us and says that he is in our debts once more for our assistance. Apparently, creatures are also attacking the village in hordes, as if drawn to the beast. He says we must stop them. Gorge tells us to fight off the beast and runs off towards the village. We make quick work of the cliff divers attacking and run to the village. People scream monster and run away, and one person trips, but just before he can cut her, Gorge yells, Stop! These people are not your enemy. The enemy lies within. You are stronger than this. Take control of the beast. Do not let it consume you. Look at what you're doing. You are destroying all that I work to restore. The fate of our people rests in our hands, brother. Your weakness would cost us everything. I cannot let this happen. I will not. Our ancestors have chosen me to lead our people to glory, and no one shall stop me. Now 
No one. No one. No one. It was I who unlocked the secrets of the Chronicles. I trained you in their ways. I who uncovered the locations of the legendary artifacts. I who defeated my tribe's greatest warrior. I am the master now. Return to me what is rightfully mine. Or I shall tear it from your bloody corpse. We engage with Gorge in battle, for the beast within has taken control of him. Without fail, we take Gorge down, and while laying on the floor, he mumbles, I have failed. I have failed you. I failed my people. I failed my ancestors. And I failed my own kin. I found out long ago what had become of my brother, but I did everything I could to deny it. I thought that if only I could prove myself stronger than he, the people would see his madness as a product of a weak mind. That they would believe the problem lay in him, not our tribe. Yet all the while, my soul was growing weaker and weaker. The inner beast had taken hold, and it would not let go. It drove me, as it drove my ancestors, the keeper of the armor, and my brother. Our tribe had lost sight of who we were. In seeking ever more strength, we allowed ourselves to fall victim to that which we had long scorned in others as weakness. Instead of learning to harden our wills with resolve, we steeled them with anger, and therein lay our folly. Like an ash, by accepting anger as our guide, we left our wills at the mercy of the inner beast, but not you. Your will is more akin to the lava which courses throughout the mountains of my homeland. It burns as strong, nay, stronger than any bonfire, and when it cools, it becomes hard and firm, unbreakable. This quality allowed you to keep your inner beast at bay. My people were once as you are now, and I believe that that is why my ancestors chose to speak to you. They sensed true strength within you, such strength as could rightly present our people and our heart. Had I but realized that myself, none of this need to have happened. <sighs> well, what's done is done. If I am to have any hope of restoring my people's name... I must start over from the beginning, and this time, I mustn't try to do it alone. It may take time, but together, my brother and I will restore our village to its former glory. And when we have, I shall remember you, my friend and fellow warrior, and how he saved me from myself, and that my dream might become reality. When talking with the captain, he tells us Wineport is in our debt once more, and that they have seen the truth with their own eyes. He asks us to let Gorge know this, and that they will be relying on him for their protection, for he is a true warrior, and their humble hamlet would be lost without his strength. When we return to Gorge, he is shocked to learn that despite all that has happened, the captain would entrust the village's defenses to him. He tells us that it has been a long road, but thanks to us, he has recovered what he's lost so many years ago. Gorge promises that once his brother's wounds are mended, they will walk the path of the warrior again and will engrave the lessons they learned in their souls, never to be forgotten. The moment he confessed this to himself, 
his soul crystal began to shimmer once again. He comments that ours is stronger than ever, and it would seem his ancestors have blessed their knowledge upon us. He tells us that the power has been described in the tomes, but is beyond his comprehension. He is ashamed he once doubted our resolve, but knows that we've truly conquered our inner beast and become a true warrior, more than he could hope for. We stand before him equal to his tribe's greatest heroes. He knows that with us representing his people, a new era will be close at hand. And that's all for the warrior quest line. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care, everyone.